welcome, welcome you to Preaching the Gospel. Hey, I'm Minister Claudette Embry, and I am so glad that you tuned in today because, as always, I usually try to bring God's best before you, and I am so grateful and so thankful for this new month, August the 8th month of this year. I'm telling you, man, time has gone by so fast. We are already getting ready to uh, pretty much end our summer season and going into the fall. But I tell you one thing, God is certainly not out of message. And I just thank God for that. Amen and amen and amen. So I just like to say thank you for tuning in to Preaching the Gospel today. Again, I am your host, Minister Claudette Embry, and I count it an honor and a privilege to be before you. Hey, you know what? If you will uh, like, you can watch uh, Preaching the Gospel on BGN TV, excuse me, BGN TV Gospel.com, or you can stream us online at www.bgn TV, excuse me, dot BGN TV. Uh, let me make sure I get this right because I'm saying it wrong. Uh, but you can stream us live, uh, BGN TV Gospel uh, dot org, dot network. Praise God. Um, if you like, you can leave me a, a email, a message at, at a ptgtvshow1 at gmail.com. And I will certainly get your email and definitely get a chance to respond and uh, just answer whatever question that you have that we can certainly delve into the Word and see what God is saying. You can watch us on Comcast Cable, Channel 20, Detroit, uh, at 2 p.m. Amen. Praise God. So tune in, second Sunday. 2 p.m. for preaching the gospel. I have so much to cover, and I guess that's why I'm so excited, and I'm trying to rush it and cram it all in, because I have so much to share with you all today, because God definitely did not leave you all without a word, without a message on today. So in saying that, definitely go and get your Bible, go and get your coffee, your tea, whatever that you drink, and, and, and go and get that so we can sit down and not only just sip coffee, water, if you chew some water, but we can uh, chew on the word, if you drink water rather, and you can we can just chew on this word word on today. Amen. So let me open up in prayer. Let me open up in prayer. All right. So we can get started. So Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Father God, for what you're doing, Lord God, what you have already spoken, what you have already said, Father God. I ask that you bless this show. I ask that you anoint it, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Think through my mind and speak through my lips, Father God, whatsoever you have already spoken, what you have already said from heaven on down to earth, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, let your anointing be on this broadcast today. And I thank you and I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, excuse me, with all that being said, uh, I want to get started. Let me just uh, give a shout out to Minister Anton Bell, the TV producer. I thank you so much. I praise God. I bless God for you. The blessings go your way. And I want to just say I praise God and thank God for my pastors, Apostles Lee and Sylvia Williams of Merciful Ministries. God bless you all. You have been such a blessing in many ways that, that, that you, you will never know. But praise God for you all in Jesus' name. Amen. So with that being said, I have to get going and get started because today's message, let me turn my paper, um, today's message, we're going to be talking about when destiny calls, when destiny calls, you certainly have to answer, better answer, you got to answer when destiny calls. And uh, the Lord had given me uh, actually that title like uh, earlier in, in the day. And I was like saying, God, what, what, what are we going to talk about? What you want to say? And he had already started giving me scriptures and things like that. But then he kind of sealed it almost like at, at, at the final moment when destiny calls. And so the reason why saying all that, there's a call of God that's on many of our lives. And when you're operating in it and when you're trying to go forth and go into what God has called you to do, there, there will be some opposition. There will be some things that's going to cause you to almost want to back down, almost want to give up. But when, the, when, the, when God has already spoken uh, his blessing, when God has already spoken over you um, and destiny starts calling, it's almost like you feel like, you know, you, you're like, I can't seem to get out of this. 
God does not want you to stop. God does not want you to fail. Um, you know, certainly the Lord definitely does not want you to abort the assignment. And that's for somebody out there. Do not abort your assignment. It may seem like it's hard, it's tough, and things are coming at you. Not only things, but people are coming at you. But God is saying, don't abort the assignment. That's for somebody out there. Do not abort the assignment because destiny is calling. And you're definitely going to get into the right place, uh, in the right position where you need to be. As long as you keep your focus and your eye on the Lord, as we like to say, keep your eye on the prize. That and, and, and remember the prophecy. Remember the word that was spoken over you. So even when you're going through some things, some challenges, and I, certainly I, I went through some this month. Oh my goodness! And if and it, and, and it was all kind of things that were thrown at me, accusations, uh, uh, indifferences, injustices, all kind of stuff was thrown at me. Even when I had to get myself together to do the work that God called me to do, it, it makes you want to say, I want to stop. This can't be of God. This must be of the devil. How about there are times that God is saying, I'm allowing you to go through. I see you're going through. You're going to go through it. But it's a test. And to see how you will uh, uh, how you will do in that test. Are you going to cave in? Are you going to succumb? Are you going to fall back? Or are you going to keep on pressing no matter what? No matter the pressure, no matter the stress. No matter what people may say, what people may think. No matter what, I thank God for um, my apostle, my pastor. Uh, he was releasing out uh, uh, impartations and blessings over his daughters. And the thing that just embedded and stuck in my mind, just like when Abraham and Isaac, they blessed their sons. I got the blessing from the father and said, God says, go forth because he wants to bless you. Go forth. No matter what people may think, no matter what people may say, go forth. God wants to bless you. And, and he had everybody to say favor, say favor over me. And, I'm, and I'm, I thank God because I'm walking that out. Do I always get it right and, 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 and do everything exact? No, but that's part of the process because I learn as I go. And so in saying that, you will learn as you go and you will grow as you go. That's what's happening. So when you get the Father's blessing released over you, um, you're going to have opposition. You're going to have ent entities. You're going to have the enemy. You're going to have things thrown at you. In other words, let's see what you're made of to get this blessing. So in that being said, so I, I want to say that I have written some things down. And so when destiny calls and you're going forth in, in, in uh, your assigned purpose, when you're going forth in the blessing that was decreed over you, Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. We already know the story about uh, uh, um, uh, Jacob. Jacob stole the blessing. Um, and it was supposed to go, his father was going to give it to Esau, but Jacob ended up getting it. You have to kind of go, you have to go all the way back. Uh, let me make sure I got, I got some scriptures for you all. You have to go all the way back about this story because even though Esau was supposed to get the blessing, it came from heaven. It came from the Lord through Rebekah. Jacob and Esau's mama, who the blessing and who, who it was supposed to go to. It was, it said, um, where was it? Genesis, um, let me make sure where my scripture. Yeah, Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. She had twins, tw she was carrying twins, didn't know she was carrying twins. And she didn't know why it was such a struggle in her belly. I tell you one thing, all I can say is, um, <laughs> I can attest to that. But anyway, in, in a in a in a in a indirect way, I'll tell you why. And it says Genesis chapter twenty five verse twenty three. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Even though she had two boys, God wasn't just looking at them like they were little boys, little kids. He looked at them as two nations, two people, because the uh, men or boys. The male, the male, the male seed, they carry the seed. So God saw two nations in her. He just, he didn't just see Jacob and Esau. He saw two nations. He saw two people. Praise God. I'm getting excited just talking about this teaching this. And the Lord said to her, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people and the elder shall serve the younger. So even in the womb, um, God had already spoken to Rebecca and told her, uh, uh, what was going to be the younger's destiny and what was going to be the older's destiny. So uh, even though 
he, uh, uh, Jacob stole the blessing. He went by what his mama had told him and, and how they end up getting it. But the blessing was already decreed from the womb. So some of you all, you carrying children, God already spoken to you about your children from the womb. But even when they get up, they grow up, they do things. And oh my God, God, you promised me all in the womb about this child. Okay, let me not, not, not divert and go to the wrong place. But we're talking about uh, when destiny calls. So destiny was on him. And, of course, we know the blessing was taken, you know, and he stole the blessing because Esau, it said Esau despised his birthright. He just, well, he was, he was, he was, uh, uh, he was cunning in the field, you know, he can go out and kill his prey. And he just took it for granted. Some of us, we take it for granted. Oh, well, I can do this and I can do that. Oh, my brother, really, Jacob, he was pretty much a mama's boy. You know, mama loved him. Uh, Esau, he, he was like, you know, he was, he was a, a, a brawn kind of guy, brawny. You know, he was tough. He could, he can go out in the field. He can get the, he can get the animals. He can get the prey. And his father was like, yeah, that's my kind of guy. That's my kind of man. I'm going to put the blessing on you because you the kind I want. But God said, uh, 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 not so. We're going to put it on Jacob. Oh, that's the mama's boy. Ain't nobody trying to look at him. Ain't nobody, no, nah, but... This blessing is going to be on him. Destiny is calling. Blessing, favor. And God said, no, it's going to be two nations. God already told his mother the, the, the older will serve the younger. Jacob was the younger. Hallelujah. Let me not get off because I'm telling you. So when destiny calls, when God says time, uh, when God says it's time from heaven's, from heaven's throne on down to speak to you in the earth realm. Now it's time for you to receive the blessing. Now it's time for you to receive the favor. The, the, the things, whatever is on you, the old stuff that's on you, whatever is familiar, whatever is stagnating you, whatever is stagnant, uh, whatever wants to hold on to you, whatever is trying to latch on to you, God is saying uh, that God has to start separating and cutting all that stuff off because he cannot allow the old to go into the destiny part, the old to go into the new. All the old friends, things like that, a separation has to happen. A cut has to happen. But God is saying, I'm getting you into your new place. I know that this message is for somebody because I can tell you one thing, before I can come forth and minister it, I had to already go, I had to already go through it. And 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 and, and still kind of going through it right now, but the 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 mm, the smoke and the dust is starting to clear. It's starting to clear. So when God is saying your destiny. It's calling. You can't go with all the old stuff. You can't go with all the old friends, your old ace boom coon. You can't go with all that old stuff because God has something prepared for you that's for you, your lineage, your family, just for you and not for, for others to come along. You know, sometimes you, you say, well, I want to try to help others and bring them along. God is saying, nope, I'm cutting it right here. And that t at times that cut hurts. But you will survive. You will live because you don't see what he sees down the road. So when destiny calls, it's time to answer, <laughs> you know, and, and even when you, you going through, just like what happened with Jacob, he got the blessings, but he had to run from his brother because he was like, you know, his brother was like, oh, you know, he out there trying to catch the next, the next game, but he come back home. Oh, I'm about to sick. I I'm so sick. I'm about to die. I'm starving. You, you're not going to die and you starve. You know how to catch up because when you read it. You know how to catch your own game. You know how to cook it and prepare it. Now, all of a sudden, you can't cook it and you can't prepare it. See, you trying to play and you trying to run a game, uh, uh, Esau. But Jacob kept going. Well, I tell you what, if I give you this, sell me your birthright. Why was Jacob saying that? Because apparently his mama kept putting it in his ear over and over. You're going to you're gonna be the one to get the birthright. You're going to be the one that uh, your brother's going to serve you. Why? Because God had already told the mama. But the daddy was like, uh oh, -uh, no, no, no. Because there are times, yeah, we know the blessing comes from the father. But there are times God will speak to the mother when the father is being stubborn. He's being hard-headed. Yes, I'm saying that because I'm going there. Amen. So he was like, sell me your birthright. So we already know Esau sold his birthright. But then when it came time for the blessing to come, and it said that uh, uh, um, Isaac's eyes got dim. And of course, they cooked up a plan, a scheme, mama and son, but that wasn't God's best. But the, the, the blessing was still going to be allocated to him. They cooked up a scheme, make a long story short. He ended up getting the blessings. You can, um, let me see. I got scripture for you all. Um, uh, Genesis, I think it's, uh, no, that's, that's the wrong, the wrong guy. 
the blessing was released. Uh, Isaac's blessings. Let's, you go to Genesis chapter t- uh, 27, 28 through 29. Go Genesis 30. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Genesis 27. When Isaac released the blessings. Chapter 27, you can go there. But anyway, let me get to my point. Um, going back to this. When um, destiny calls. So we already know what ended up happening. Jacob had to leave. The blessing was on him. His father released the blessings. And he ended up serving 20 years with his in-law, Laban. And after serving 20 years of of helping him, helping Laban get best. Because even God, God will, there will be a favor and blessing on you. Even if you're working for somebody who you know is not treating you right. But all of a sudden, something about their business, something about their ministry, something about their corporation seem to reap so much blessing and favor because here you walk in with that on you. And so even if you're in a place knowing that you're not treated right, the favor and the blessing will be on them because God God is like, I'm going to make sure uh you I'm going to make sure you get the resources, you get sustenance, you get taken care of even if you have even if you're working for a Laban in the spirit. Even if you're working for a Laban, God will still bless you. In spite of the Laban, because God is keeping his word to to whom he has made the covenant, to whom he has assigned it to. So going there, um, uh, God showed Jacob a dream, how to, uh, 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 get, get, how to, how to get these, uh, um, what was the, the lamb, the sheep, how to get them to increase, to prosper. And when David did what he was, what God showed him in a dream, all of a sudden, here you go. Here go your adversaries. Uh, <laughs> Laban's son starts saying, look, he taking all our stuff. He doing this and he doing that. Again, when destiny calls, people are not going to like it. When destiny calls, they, they get upset. You must be taking our stuff. Oh, who you think you are? You're going to have the naysayers because all of a sudden they start getting afraid because I, I wrote this down and it's for you all to write this down. And, and some of you, you can even probably tweet this. You can probably put on your Facebook. Um, when the blessing is on your life, when the blessing is evident, when destiny calls, it, when it's evident, and when you begin to look big to somebody else, that's when they start getting afraid. They have to do whatever they need to do to shut you down. Oh no, I see this in the spirit. Oh no, I see that. You see, you got a lying spirit on you because you're really not seeing from the eyes of God. So when, in other words, what I'm saying, when you begin to be, get big in somebody else's eyes, that's when they get afraid. When you begin to get big in somebody else's eyes, that's when they get afraid. And sometimes you don't even know God is rising you up because you're just doing what you know to do every day. But God is increasing it. God is definitely increasing it. Amen. Like I said, I've given you all some scriptures. So now we're going to go, I'm going to jump over to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 32. So now destiny had called and God told Jacob to leave uh, Laban and go back to his father's land, his father, uh, go, go, go back there because he see that Laban is like, uh, you taking all of my stuff. The anointing is on you. Everybody calling your name. People are submitting under you, Jacob. That was the, that was the decree. That was the blessing. Even from the womb that was already there. You know, um, I, I, I even wrote down a scripture. Let me go here real quick. I even wrote down a scripture when, when, when they begin to see the blessing on you, like David, all the way in first Samuel chapter 17, verse 22 through 29, when they begin to see the favor on you or the blessing on you, it causes your adversary to be at trouble. They, they, they uncomfortable. They, they, oh my God, I see it on them and I got to do whatever I can to do to slow them down, to slow that momentum. Don't you slow down for anything when God has caused you and when God has spoken you from heaven to eternity. Now, when, when somebody gets in the way of God, he, there's just like, just like, uh, uh, Jacob, he said, no, you got to leave. But when they get in the way of what God is doing, God will send his angels down. And then now it, it, it becomes, you're no longer fighting with man. You about to fight with God and you're definitely going to lose. Touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. Those that bless you, I will bless those that curse you. I will curse. Amen. Yep. That's Bible. I pray that I wrote that down. Yeah, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. God said that to Abraham, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. When they get in the way, oh my goodness, they 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 better hope that they don't because now that person is no longer fighting with 
man, flesh, they're fighting with God. Because now God is saying, I sent my word to that person. I sent my word from eternity and I'm going to make sure it happened. Yes, you're going to go through some struggles. Yes, you're going to go through some growth. Yes, you're going to go through some growth spurts. You're going to go through some challenges and some trials, but it's to make you, it's to shape you, it's to cause you to step up into who you are really called to be. Now, let me hurry up and go here so I won't lose time. So that same thing happened to David. When they saw the anointing on David, oh my God, and, and the, uh, 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 the Philistines was fighting against Israel. And, and when David heard of what was going on, here come Goliath taunting Israel, saying this and saying that, what he going to do? And David said, what is to be done for the man that killed this Philistine? It took his own brothers to get upset with him. <laughs> it took his own brothers to get upset with him because of what David was saying. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 22. Uh, um, let me go there real quick. Did I put it? No, no, it's right here. First, it, it, it took his own brothers because when they see the anointing, they start making accusations against you, saying you prideful, saying you haughty, saying you all kind of, you this, you that. And 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 knowing that there's, there, there's, there's a battle, knowing that there... Is something that's going on that maybe you could be a resource, maybe you could be a help. But it takes the it takes the one that's insecure, it takes the one that's envious or jealous of you to start tearing you down, not only uh to you but to others. And so other people they'll start looking, yeah, I think you are kind of like this. Yeah, you are like that. But anyway, Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when David spoke unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why came thou hither? And with whom has thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Where? Why you come down here? Why you got to come over here and and and, and sit with us and be? Why you got to be the one? <laughs> and then Eliab said, "I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thy might that you might see the battle. I know your arrogance. I know you. Because I, I looked up the word pride. I know your arrogance. I know your insolence. Your insolence means you're rude. You're disrespectful. You got bad behavior. You're just overbearing. You're too bold." I know all of that. And then he said, I know your naughtiness. And naughtiness means you got wickedness in you. You got badness. But, you know, you got a negative attitude. Mm, no, David was bold. He was confident in what he he was getting ready to do. And David got so upset with him. And, and David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? David didn't say that all nicely. What have I done? No, David was a warrior. He said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Why are you accusing me? Destiny was calling. Because it was time. Because Saul wouldn't take down that king. So God said, I'm going to have David to do it. <laughs> Woo! Destiny was calling. Let me go real quick because I got an announcement to make at the end. Destiny was calling. When destiny was call is calling, people get upset. Genesis chapter 32. Jacob, we already know, Jacob wrestled with God. I can't go all the way back. But Jacob wanted, to, wanted the blessing. Didn't he already get the blessing? I had to look at that and see again. It said he wrestled with God. It said Jacob was left alone, verse 24, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. The angel did. And, and uh, touched the hollow of his thigh. And his thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with that angel. And he said, let me go. The angel said to Jacob, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall, shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God, not over God. You have power with God and with men and has prevailed. You went, all, you went through all of this stuff with Laban. God was like, I got to get you strong because Laban came after Jacob. Because of what his son said. You stole our stuff. You stole this. And Laban came after him. And God showed Laban a dream. Watch what you say to him. It be either good or bad. You watch what you say. to Because that's God's man. I'm passionate about this, you all. I'm passionate about this. Because I can I recognize as I go through this. Amen. And, and he said... Um, uh, because you prevail with God and with man. You prevail with man. You endured the test of time with Laban. And now you fought and you prevail. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Where was the blessing? How did he bless him? When he, re when he, when that angel said, when the angel changed his name from Jacob, from supplanter to Israel prince. That's where 
He got the blessing from his father. Now the ultimate blessing was from Father God. Now I'm sealing this thing because you prevailed. You showed me, Jacob. You went through the test of time. You prevailed on everything that you went through, and you still kept your faith. I got to quit on that. You all, I tell you, there's so much more that I want to say and I could say. Let me get this paper. But I just want to um, say all of that. Your destiny is calling. Do not give up. Do not give in. In Jesus' name, amen. And I have to tell you this real quick. I'm going to be in a conference September the 8th in Windsor, Ontario. Um, one of uh, my good friends, Karen Taylor, and you'll be able to see the flyer at the end. Uh, it's going to be in Windsor, Ontario at the Cabado Club. 2175 Parent Avenue, Windsor, Ontario, just on the other side. The cost is $45. That includes lunch. You have to have your passport or either an enhanced driver's license if you're over in the Michigan area to attend. Come and see the speakers. My apostle, Sylvia Williams, Pastor Mary Panache, and Rashawn Young. We're all going to be uh, speakers. That's going to be at this uh, conference. For more information, you can go to Standard of Excellence uh, for Women at gmail.com www.soe the number four women.com and uh inquire email karen taylor to get your tickets amen i look forward to see you september the 8th from 9 a.m to 4 p.m god bless all right This is your girl Vicky Wines, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.